Mag number eight, full auto on the beat. Hey, welcome to the recoil suppressor test. We're at CanCon in South Carolina right now, and we figured that as part of this event, we'd go and destroy some cans, uh, preferably on video, so you guys can point and laugh. But all joking aside, we actually want to do this semi-scientifically. Now, there are going to be some limitations on what we can do. Now, we don't have a bunch of lab-coded scientists with clipboards offering their opinions, but what we can do is offer some different perspectives based on user case scenarios. For example, Dave here, he's our silencer nerd within the recall organization. If there was a Comic-Con furry, rear-wearing sort of organization for silencers, then Dave would be president. I mean, that's true, and maybe CanCon can be that thing. I mean, if we still want advertisers, I mean, maybe not. <laughs> But there is some testing that we can do. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about things like weight. Like the weight that the manufacturer lists quite often without a mount and a silencer without a mount is a really interesting adult object, but it is not a silencer. If you're brave enough. Yeah, everything if you're brave enough. <laughs> but if, unless it's on the gun. So we're, we're going to weigh them with mounts on the gun so it's safe, or so it's fair, like one to one. Uh, then we are also going to do some decibel meter testing. Now, there are some limitations of decibel meter testing, but we have a legitimate Larson Davis calibrated decibel meter that we are going to do in two places, at the end of the silencer and the ear. We have some subjective testing, and to be honest, uh, for as long as I've been around silencers, I trust people that know silencers' opinions a lot more. So we're doing something a little old school and with a new twist for you on there. Uh, then we are going to be doing a velocity testing, talking about that. Gas blowback, we're going to be covering that too. There's a lot of different ways that we can measure back pressure. Back pressure is the big thing right now. We're going to do it in two different ways, and we're going to see how they line up. And of course, SOCOM table twos to see if these things will like last you, know, you in the end of the world and everything else. And we have Luke here also giving his opinion on it from a different aspect. Red neck and eyes. Red, Red neck, neck and eyes. eyes. Right? So, I mean, uh, what you guys look for in a suppressor, and that's what I'm most excited about here, is the subjective pieces to our testing, right? It, what, how it sounds to me, how it feels to me. I don't necessarily care what the actual numbers on paper are, the decimal reduction. Yes, it's important, but those finite numbers don't matter. How does it sound to me? And again, end user and what you want. What you want on the end of a 12.5 barrel is probably going to be completely different than what I want on the end of an 18 or a 22 inch bolt gun for killing critters and turning them into food, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful part about this. And that's the beautiful part about CanCon, right? You, you can go ahead, you can test all these suppressors, do it all in one place. And we're going through a small smattering of them here, you know, but what's available at CanCon is like tenfold. So I can't wait exactly. to get into this. All right, so in order to level the playing field, the guns we're going to be using are these 12.5 inch, which is God's length of barrel in 5.56. These 12.5 inch American defense manufacturing uh, ARs, they are, so to my mind anyway, they're some of the greatest ARs on the market right now. And that's not just because they're sponsoring this. I have two of these in my personal guns and I would trust them uh, anywhere I need a gun to go bang. We do have a full auto lower as well, and that full auto lower will be the same one, which will be added to each one of these ADM uppers. We have three uppers, just in case one goes down. However, mm, that's probably one of the stories that we're going to tell in, the, in this whole video anyway. There you go, boy. Crack on. Best speed. Every silencer gets the same ammunition. It's Federal American Eagle 55 grain stuff. And the reason for like the short AR is that, man, this is like hard mode for a lot of silencers. If we had like a 24 inch barrel subsonic 300 blackout, like everything's gonna sound good. And that's stupid. And it'll make like the can manufacturers happy, but like this isn't about them, this is about y'all. And you get to figure out uh, kind of how these kind of go A to B in, in this worst case scenario. And we're gonna run these a lot harder than uh, most of you guys are, I promise. And I think that's important to know too, simply because if we're, oh, I'll hold a gun, I like holding guns. It's like the conch. It just, <laughs> it's a good call, uh, the talking rifle. Right, it's important to note that we're gonna beat the crap out of these things and, and some of them might fail, right? And the point of this is to push them further than anybody else is going to so they don't have to. Yep, so exactly. you're gonna work them, as we said before, you're gonna work them totally differently than I would. Unless you have a post sample saw 
or an M16, then you're probably not gonna put these cans through the abuse that we're gonna do. So stick around. All right, we cannot talk about suppressors or silencers without talking about sound and sound reduction, right? And there are some subjective ways to measure it, and we've always been looking for a more objective way to measure the sound, the pressure waves coming off. Now, you can't just use like your phone sound meter because the microphone and speakers in your phone are meant for you know, like the, the human vocal range. These are loud, the impulse is fast, which means it requires a specialized calibrated meter and a correct microphone. Now we have the appropriate Larson Davis meter and a microphone very specifically set up just for gunshots and reports. Now you can see right now, there's a little bit of mist going around. As long as we're testing everything in the same atmospheric conditions in which we will test from a bare muzzle and ensure it's consistent, it will be fine. If we were high up in the mountains, we were hanging out on sea level, there's a low pressure system coming in, it can all be very different. We're outside for a reason, away from anything like reflecting, and so we're gonna kind of compare everything relative to one another. Current military standards, you have the microphone set up one meter from the end of the gun. Now, what does that mean? There's actually some debate about this. Some people like to say it's the end of the muzzle of the gun itself. Other people do it from the end of the silencer. We're doing it from the end of the silencer. The, the length of your gun is essentially from the buttstock to the tip of whatever you have on the end. So, you know, it's one of those things where people can kind of like cheat for the test. The most important thing is to do everything the same way. And we have silencers of different sizes. If it's measured from here, eh, not a big fan. We're also gonna be measuring at the shooter's ear as well, because that is gonna be something like as you're shooting, that's where a lot of your noise is coming from, the ejection port and to the shooter's ear. Now this isn't everything. There's a lot of debate about exactly how to measure silencers. There are plenty of new testing methodologies. This is a standard. And so we're gonna start with this, but we're also gonna be doing a little bit more. Now, there's a lot of debate about the newest and best and greatest ways to test a silencer. And, you know, we just did the, the metering stuff, but there is an older way. And older you know, way? an older way. So just, just go with it. it no problems blindfolding somebody on a rifle range. He's not stood up in front of the stake yet, so it'll be okay. It'll be just fine. Is the shoulder rub necessary at this point? I mean, point? I think I was going to do a whisper, but it's okay. So oh. just be fine. Don't worry. So Mitch Werbel of, of Military Armament Corporation, one of the ways that he would test his silencers is he would take his secretaries in the desert, put them in a chair, and blindfold them, and do what I would call the lethal optometrist test. It is a simple A and B single elimination, and we're going to find out subjectively what Luke thinks about each of these silencers. What's the test called? I call it the lethal optometrist. Yeah, why the lethal? Well, I mean, you know, it's just for, it's for effect. It's for effect. Yeah, I'm not digging it much. I mean, you know, don't, don't think about all the guns and stuff happening okay. over here right now. So what we're, how we're setting this up is Luke is gonna be in front of the muzzle. I'm sorry, not in front of the muzzle. He didn't hear that, right? He's earplugs in? No, no earplugs. What? And um, he's gonna be on the ejection port side because we're doing this test in hard mode. So it's gonna be the uh, definitely don't shoot Luke optometrist A and B test, and we're each gonna go through it because I'm gonna be honest, you know, like the decibels are one thing, but decibels are kind of like being on top of the mountain and it's how steep it is to get up there. I think it is, is a bigger part of it. And so it's gonna be Luke and after we bury his body, it'll be Ian and then I'll be the last man standing. I mean, then, then it'll be my turn, so. This is like one of those Netflix shows where the chick on the other side of the wall sounds hot and then you open the door and she's like. Do I sound she'd hot? Keep you is warm it just the voice? She'd keep you warm in the Ooh. winter, right? Yeah. I, okay. I'm missing the job opportunity, by the way. I should have worked at a call center. I think, uh, you know, I think that would have worked out well for me. So we're gonna start out single elimination. I mean, Luke, yeah, we'll figure it out. Stand by. I hate the words elimination and lethal, just for the record. <laughs> Up next is my favorite, and it breaks an awful lot of cans. It's the vaunted SOCOM Table 2 test. It is eight 30 round mags, 240 rounds. The only break is when this man puts another mag in the gun, has different rates of fire, and then we're also gonna be testing temperature before, after, two minutes later, and tracking rounds per minute, because there is some 
full auto in this one. There is indeed, and there's a lot of sort of misconceptions out there. There's a lot of marketing bullshit as well with regards to what makes a full auto rated can. And, you know, it's full auto rated. Does that mean it's good for a belt fed? Does that mean it's good for a table two test? Does that mean it's good for an occasional mag dump? Well, I guess we're going to find out which one of these cans will fail, if any. It really means, full auto rated means, we will warranty it if you have an M16 lower, which we do. I mean, look, I'll tell you that the ad managers wanted this to be best suppressor ever, and that was gonna be it. But you know what? We are running through a half dozen, a little bit more, and we're gonna kind of show you how to figure out what the best suppressor is for you through objective. And not with, uh, not, not with like lab coats, but you know, we have some tools and we have notebooks and we have a hell of a lot of experience.